The Showtime Podcast with Michael Cooper is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. <laughs> uh, your thoughts yeah. on some of the Celtics, that rivalry with the Celtics. Who did you hate most on that team and wanted to hit? Now, I'm going to tell you mine first. I wanted to slap the shit out of Cedric Maxwell so many times, man. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've grown to love the guy. <laughs> Who was you know your what, guy? Coop? I mean, I had two. I had two. ML. I mean, waving that towel over there. I just wanted to smack the shit out of him just, just so he could stop waving. And then number two, of course, Danny Ainge. <laughs> he did Danny Ainge with, with a passion. You know, I just wanted to, you know, I, I remember I remember we had one play, Buck was like, B, we're going to run 52. So you're going to catch the ball, and Danny Ainge is going to be trailing you, so he's going to be on your left side. He said, I want you to go up, put that left elbow out. You're going to hit him right in his damn throat. <laughs> And I said, Buck, that's going to be an offensive foul. He said, Baby B, trust, do that. Man, I did that shit, cool. Bam, shot it, heard the whistle, the ball. Count it. Foul on Danny Age, right? And Danny Age over there like this. You know, did you see what he did? You see what he did to me? And Buck, that's what I'm talking about, B, you know. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I, man, I wanted to hit that dude every game we played. I was trying to find a way. And just, just to just to get one on his ass. I just want. I just hated him so much. But like you said, you know, when he went into being a general manager and I'm coaching, uh, um, I had to have. I had had a few encounters with him where I had to talk to him and everything. And after that, I, was, I mean, we we were, we were cool. You know, everything was kind of squashed. And, and I found out I, I didn't like Cedric as well because he came in to do an interview with me when I was coaching in New Jersey. And it was my first year coaching. And our guy said, well, he does it with every head coach. You know, so can Cedric come in and do an interview with you? And I, and I looked at him just like this, Coop, and straight at his name is Mark. I said, Mark, hell no. I'm not doing an interview with Cedric. <laughs> you know, coach, he does, it with every, he does it with every team every team head coach. I said, I don't give a shit. I ain't talking to his ass. And I didn't talk to him. The first year, you know, we went Boston twice. I never did an interview with him. And then my man Mark was like, Coach, you're killing me. The next year, he's like, please. Every, I said, all right, I'll talk to him. So he comes in. You know, Cedric, hey, what's going on? And I'm sitting there like, what's up? You know, <laughs> and we finally sit down and we start talking. <laughs> I was straight Englewood, too. Coop, I was like, yeah, what's up? You know, <laughs> and he sat down and started talking. <laughs> he started talking. And he ended up being there like 10 minutes later because I was like, okay, you know what? We had a good time. And I was like, all right, this dude's all right. You know, so. It took me a while to, to open up to, like, you know, Danny and, and, and Maxwell and, and Larry. We were on, you know, uh, uh, the panel together for the first, you know, for that lottery pick. And so, you know, got to know Larry a little bit more. But, yeah, it, it was hard for a while. But, man, ML Carr and Danny Ainge, I wanted to knock the shit out of them. <laughs> no, that's gone. These guys are all buddy buddies. And, you know, I, I knew that when I was coaching New Orleans and, and we were playing against Utah and Darren Williams and Chris Paul. Oh, you know, we're, we're, you know, they were right behind each other in the draft. You know, we ended up getting, you know, Chris Paul at four. Utah took, took Dan Williams at three. And, you know, the night before the game, we come in, or the day of the game, we come in for shoot around. And Chris Paul was like, you know, what you do last night, coach? I said, I do what I normally do before the night, you know, night before a game. I go to a movie, you know, and, and relax. And I go back home and I, you know, start thinking about the game. I said, what you do? He said, oh, me and uh, uh, Darren came over, you know, last night we had dinner and everything everything and, and you know spent the night I took him back to the hotel this morning I said you did what I said wait a minute wait a minute y'all did, did he spent the night I said what kind of shit is this and and now y'all gonna go and battle each other I said man I don't get it I said I, I just don't get it I said there's no way in hell that if Boston was in town me and Danny Ainge gonna have dinner together and he gonna spend the night at my house I said there's no way in hell so I don't get that that, that those rivalries are, are been gone you know, that's why all these guys are joining each other because they want to play with their buddies and all this shit. I mean, that, 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 that stuff is, it don't exist, the rivalries like they did back in the day. That Boston stuff to LA rivalry will be the best and last rivalry that we'll ever see. But you know, it be, it really made basketball, took it to another level, enabling these players to do what they do today. Oh, I agree. I, I mean, you know, you know, what we were able to accomplish in the 80s and 90s and, and, the teams before us, 
have made the game what it is today. You know, the popularity of the game, the money these guys are getting paid, you know, it's all been paved the way by, you know, us, just like it was paved the way, you know, from Cousy and, and, and you know, and, and Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell and all those guys and Jerry West for us. So, you know, I don't, um, you know, to, to me, you know, I tell them kudos to all of them, you know, get as much money as you can, you know, why you can, because it is a business. Um, and, and as soon as you can't play the game, you're going to get traded or, or cut or whatever the case may be. But this game has been made on the backbones of all these guys before them. So my biggest thing with all the young guys is pay homage to the guys who got this to where it is. You know, they, they don't know the history of basketball enough, which is something that's surprising me. When we came in, you know, Coop, you, you before me, but I know when I got I, – I knew about the Celtics back in the day. You know, I knew the history of the game back in the day. These guys – I was in Cleveland coaching and I mentioned Sidney Moncrief and they was like, who was that? I was like, are you fucking kidding me? You don't know, you, you don't know Sidney Moncrief or James Tony? You know, guys like that. They was like, no. I was yeah. like, man, y'all, y'all need to really look back at the history of the game of basketball. Sign up at fanduel.com slash Boston and get in on the action. With $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. 